Hello, it's Sandy, and I want to talk about getting started with pen and ink drawing, because you might think you need something fancy. I'm going to go through some types of pens really quickly before we get to techniques. Ballpoint pen, you probably already have right near you somewhere. There's probably one within reach. You can do art with a ballpoint pen. A gel pen, lots of us have entire sets of gel pens. They come in all kinds of colors. I recently did a video on how to unstick your gel pens if they get stuck. And I will link you to that in the description down below. Felt tip pen, again, ubiquitous, inexpensive. You could easily do lots of different drawings with these. Fountain pen, one of my favorites because I like the experience. You fill the pen with inks and then you write with it and it's just a, an elegant experience. A dip pen is a pen that's either got a nib that you can insert into a handle or you can use a glass pen and dip it into whatever liquid you want to draw with. Technical pens. The one on the left is a fancy pen. You can refill it with ink. You can change out nib widths. The micron pens are ones that just come in different widths and they're disposable pens. And a ruling pen, which is fairly new to me, so I will be doing a video on one at some point in the next couple months probably. But let's get on to techniques because that's really what I wanted to talk about. And these are techniques you can apply if you're doing an actual drawing, if you're drawing a thing, you can use any of these techniques. You can also use them if you're just doing patterns of some sort. and I'm not necessarily talking about Zentangle. Zentangle is a type of drawing that people do with all different kinds of patterns and lines. Totally wonderful. Look up Zentangle if you're looking for alternate types of lines to use. And you can use those in your drawing as well. But these nine and the variations on them are ones that I use on a regular basis when I'm doing pen and ink drawings of all different kinds depending on the subject matter. And I'll use one of these techniques in just one section and then move to a different technique in another section. So you don't have to just do the entire thing in one. Patching is just making lines. They can be close together or far apart. And that gives you a different gray tone to them. So you can have them closer together to make a darker color. Cross hatching is when you do the hatching, but you crisscross them. You can go vertically and horizontally. You can go at angles. And guess what? You can do multiple layers of cross hatching. You can do vertical, horizontal, angled to the right, angled to the left. You can do 45 degree angles and get many more layers to create deeper and deeper shadows. It's a little difficult to get consistency. As you can see, I was trying to do this quick and it is hard to get it really consistent going really quickly when you're doing a dark area. Contouring goes around the shapes of the object. So you can indicate the shape of it simply by the angle of the lines. So if there's you know, an apple that you're going around the edge of, if there's ripples on the water, if there's clouds in the sky, lots of different things you could use contour lines for to indicate the shape of the object itself. Then there's broken hatching. I use this in all different kinds of ways. You can use them in continuous lines across the page. You can use them as grasses and create different kinds of textures using that. Animal fur is a good one for broken hatching. You can go from dark to light by varying the size of each of the lines, making them more like dots as they get to the edge. You can make them more like grasses and, and create just all different kinds of textures and patterns that go from dark to light when you're using your, your broken hatching. Stippling. For some people, it's very relaxing. For others, it's maddening. I tend to use it not for an entire drawing, but for a section of a drawing. So if there's something that has a particular texture, I can call attention to that by using stippling with it. And the amount of stippling you put in, how close you make the dots, as well as how thick your pen is, can make a real big difference in giving you lots of those gray tones. You can go from very pale to very dark based on how much white of the paper is still showing through. And then there's scribbling, which can also be fun and an interesting way to add texture. If you're doing hair, curly hair, you can do this kind of thing. Lots of different things where I just do some scribbling to indicate dark areas. And the tighter you make your scribbles, the darker your color will be, your overall hue. 
and I tend to make figure eight shapes. If I want it to get really dark, I make really tiny figure eights as opposed to really large ones. And that fills in more of the real estate on the paper with a darker hue quickly. And then there's repeated shapes. This can be any kind of shapes. I'm doing circles here. It could be squares, it could be triangles, it could be whatever suits what you are drawing, whatever kind of pattern you're trying to put in it. And just creating a whole bunch of those different shapes makes for whatever kind of gray you're looking for. If you do small shapes and they're close together, it'll be darker because you have more ink on the paper. If you want less ink on the paper, use larger shapes. And I'm just filling in, for the most part, in between each one of those shapes. You can use rectangles. And this might look like bricks, but picture this as the veins on a leaf. You could use this for all different kinds of things to create interesting types of patterns. And then very wide open shapes will leave lots of white. So the more white paper shows through, the lighter the overall tone is. And you can do this for just a patterned background or you could do it for a drawing itself. Tiling is really fun. I'll show you an example of tiling in just a moment in this video. And it's when you create sections of any one of these patterns or other patterns. And you're just going to turn the pattern in different directions so that it starts to fill in the entire area. You can do them in a very random pattern, like in the first square, or here I'm doing a grid of them and going, you know, doing my horizontals and verticals in a pattern and the angles in a pattern so that you get some regularity to it, more like tiles on a floor. And then you can get very random with it as well. You can do all different directions with your hatching in order to make a tiled pattern. And you can do that with any kind of pattern that you're using tiling technique for as well. And here I'm using very tiny, tiny tiling, little bits of hashing. And then the more air you leave in between it, the lighter overall it's going to be. And finally is scallops. Scallops are a shape that you can use for lots of different things. Just for general texture, you could use it for scales on an animal or feathers on a bird. You can make them very random, like in the first block, very regular, as in the second. And then you can also add things in between. If you have large scallops, you can use some of the hashed, uh, dotted hash lines in order to create some depth inside each one of those shapes. So you can combine any one of these in a myriad of ways. And out of just nine techniques, look at how many different types of patterns were gained from them. So the things you can do with pen and ink are myriad. So don't tell yourself, oh, it's just a pen and ink drawing. It's just a little whatever. It's a few lines. No, you can do all kinds of really interesting things with it. And it can be very therapeutic and relaxing as well. That's what I find it as, especially when I'm doing something like tiling. And that's what I'm doing here, tiling with hashes. And I'm just going back and forth, vertical, horizontal, angle to the left, angle to the right and just turning my hand and turning the pen so that I can fill in each one of these sections with those lines. I'm working around a simple pencil drawing. I did triangles for the trees and to create the moon, I used the inside of a roll of washi tape and then I moved it over a little bit to make a second circle so I could create the other part of the moon and make it a partial moon instead of a full moon. Very simple to do. You could do all different kinds of complex art using this technique and just use this for the sky and then do the rest of the drawing. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is leave it blank and just have the lines in the background as the drawing on the, the image. You could make this in a size that's going to work to be framed and give it as a gift. The holidays are coming. You could do something wonderful like that or do a card with no stamping on it whatsoever. You can just do this with a ballpoint pen and a piece of paper, trim it down, put it on a card, and you're done. You could use gel pens, you could do this in color, so many different ways that you can approach something like this. Here's a couple other pieces of art that I have done with pen and ink and using these very same techniques to create landscapes. You can see some of the different textures inside of them that I've showed you today.
So you can use them in different combinations, different types of ways for different areas of the drawing to create something really, really interesting. If you would like to pin my graphic or download a PDF of it for reference next time you do your drawings, that's all over on my blog, link in the doobly-doo down below. And on Wednesday this week, I'm going to be using one of the Inktober prompts to create some Christmas cards using a ballpoint pen and a gel pen. So again, you don't have to have fancy pens in order to do beautiful work and even make cards with your pen and already have on hand. All right. Thanks so much for joining me. I will see you again on Wednesday.